Welcome back to yet another Thursday. It's 10 minute blend build and I'm gonna make it a low polygon uh, object in 10 minutes yet again. I give myself about 10 minutes or exactly 10 minutes to model something and uh, it's a different theme or a different topic every week. This time around I'm gonna do something called an O'Neill cylinder. I never knew what that was until uh, recently. I had a comment from someone named, uh, let's see, uh, sorry if I say your name wrong, Mirke, M-I, Mircea. <laughs> Mercia, Myers and Murray. <laughs> I've got no idea. Mircea, one, two, three, anyway. Suggested that I should make an O'Neill cylinder in uh, 10 minutes with the city walls and everything like that. So that's going to be a real challenge. Uh, first of all, as I said, I didn't even know what it was, so I had to Google it, and it looks like an awesome thing. It's one of those uh, turny uh, cylinders that you have in space, and uh, it'll keep gravity by rotating around its own axis, so everything basically is... Uh, it's going to be uh, yeah, upside down, down but so your gravity, gravity will push you, push you. Well, well, it's not gravity, gravity but it'll, it'll thrust, thrust you towards, towards the, the floor, floor by, by its own its rotation. rotation. It, just like last week, I've already just imported a texture and uh, created a basic material. And uh, it, just watch any of the previous episodes of this series, or especially the early ones, and you can see me do that if you want to see how it's done. I use just uh, a really simple bitmap with some uh, colors to uh, drag and drop the UV islands. So I colorize the meshes uh, rather than uh, UV unwrapping it. Let's make an O'Neill cylinder. Ready, steady, go. All right, shift A, make a circle mesh. Let's bump up the definition to 128 segments. R to rotate, X axis, 90 degrees. S to scale it, 10. Tab into edit mode, select the edge. Uh, e to extrude, Y axis, and 100. Uh, control R to do a loop cut, and then 200 loop cuts for some detail. Right click to e exit that. I want to make a duplicate out of this tube, so I'll just shift, shift D that one. And uh, now let's make some uh, mountains on this one. So I'll go into the modifier. We'll add a displacement modifier and add a material. Let's do a cloud material and change the size to one. So there's our basic, uh, just do a color ramp here as well to get some water, water, water. Uh, so let's do this to get some shallows there. That should do it. And then let's get some uh, shallow, let's control and click here as well and drag this to get some flat grounds and we'll just have some mountain peaks sticking up. So there we go, some mountains. Okay, that's done. Uh, go back to the modifier and let's apply this one. Tab into edit mode, control T to triangle, or A first, control T to triangulate it. And then let's go to uh, tab out of edit mode and let's do uh, decimate to get a little bit more low polys back and some uh, not so uniformed. Maybe like uh, that should do. Let's apply that one. So we've got our mountains there. And now let's texture this one. So tab edit mode. Let's go into shading, grab this texture, material, UV editing. Uh, let's reset these UVs. Reset A to select everything, scale zero. Let's make it green as the grass. And then let's enable this one again now. Uh, tab, scale this one and shift Y to not scale it on the axis. And let's get the water back here, maybe like that. And we need to color this one as well. So shading, material, UV editing, uh, reset these UVs. A, let's see, A, reset, A, scale zero, grab it. Let's get some water. There we go. And then now let's do some mountains. So one on the keypad, um, see its transparency here. Select this object. Uh, and then see through if I didn't have that. Yeah. Double click A and then uh, tab one for what that vertex ones. Hold the control key and right click and select all these mountain tops here. Control plus twice. Uh, A to grab these. G. Let's see. Let's make them gray. And then control minus on the keypad a few times to get the tips. G and Let's get uh, them to white. So there's our snow-capped mountains. Okay, now we need to put some buildings in. How's the time? Six minutes, 44. I've got the basics done already. So I'll do this one. Press here. Um, tab to get into edit mode. Three on the keypad. No, not on the keypad. <laughs> Three on the 
top there to get into face select. And then I'm going to switch this one to select circle. And I'm going to put, put some buildings here. So let's just hold the shift key and drag some segments where I'm going to put some city blocks here. So this is the neat thing about the O'Neill cylinder. It'll have some stuff upside down as well because it'll spin. So the gravity will take care of that, hopefully not falling down. So maybe like this should do. Okay. Uh, so I'll press Shift D to duplicate that, Escape, and then P to separate it by selection. So that created a new object here. Now I need to create a template for the building. So I'll do, sh let's see, Shift A. Let's create a mesh cube. Tab, scale, uh, Z axis, scale, X axis, and then Shift, space, and G to move it a little bit. And then let's get this Shift, space again and move it out of sight. Uh, let's do scale it on the z-axis again like a city block I won't have time to go into much more detail than that so that's our template there let's uh, go to this one again so this is I'm gonna add uh, a new modifier here and it's gonna be a particle system and uh, let's go to this tab here I'm gonna change it to the hair modifier and then on render here we'll select this uh, instead of a path we'll do an object and I'll pick this cube here and let's scale them up so that's going to be doubling as our city blocks and I see that there I need to offset this one so tab. okay that should do it. so that's a <laughs> primitive city blocks here let's colorize this one extra one. so tab eight to select everything shading let's pick the same material as the other stuff UV editing a scale zero grab it let's make them a bit darker a bit dystopian okay so four and a half minutes to go let's add some clouds here as well so tab new object shift uh, shift a add mesh and a uv or icosphere i'll do we need to grab the material for that one as well so that's it uv editing a to select everything a here on the left scale down to zero uh, g to move this one into white Let's start making some, uh, let's see in transparent mode here. So there, seven on the keypad to see the tops. Let's just do some scalings here. So I press shift D to duplicate this one a few times. Scale it. If you watched the last one as well, I used some proportional editing. So I'll do the same here. I'll uh, switch on the proportional editing and then one to get into vertex mode. G to move and then use the scroll wheel here to move this a little bit. Then we can get some irregular shapes here and we can also use here to rotate these a little bit. Okay, so I've got three minutes to go. Okay, so I'll just uh, have to duplicate this cloud a little bit this time. So L to link select a few of these as well. L to link select that one and rotate. Okay, so uh, let's double click A to get everything. Shift D. Let's make a different. Oh, I've got proportional editing on, that's why I have to deselect that. Let's just make a, a few different clouds here. Re enable proportional. I've got two minutes 50 to go. We can make some variations on the clouds here at least. clouds will have to double for everything here so I'll go into um, see through up here as well to move these in to the tunnel and duplicate them Let's see select that one tab there actually you know what? I'll hide these for now make it a bit easier to edit okay I'll be just rendering this from one side so it should be all right if it looks a bit similar so I've got 145 to go okay I think this should do some clouds in there 
Okay, uh, Alt H to unhide everything. Tab, let's see this again. We've got our buildings and everything, the tunnel. Let's uh, put some lights in here. Shift A, light. So the modeling is pretty much done now, so I'm not gonna, well, consider myself done actually for now. So I'll just uh, control Z. Uh, shift A. Let's put a light in here. Point light. Let's do the uh, maybe 5000 watts. Some shadows. Custom distance. Let's ramp that up to max. So I've got 45 seconds to go, but I think I'm pretty much done anyway. So Shift D. Let's duplicate this one to a few sites here. So let's enable this again. So twenty three seconds to go. Shift add. Let's add a camera here as well. Control Alt Numpad. And then we can go into the shading tab here or rendering ambient occlusion red that's it 10 minutes up <laughs> okay dismiss okay so that's uh, it uh, i'm finished uh, with this uh, let's see if i can uh, let's bring this up again uh, texture let's do some Cavity. I think sh shadow is not going to be so good in here because it's covered by uh, the tube itself. So let's uh, disable the shadow for this one. But we'll keep the cavity to both here. Let's ramp these up a bit. That was uh, quite fun to make, actually. I really enjoyed that. So thanks for suggesting to make an O'Neill cylinder. How many times have I said that now? I'll say it one more time. O'Neill cylinder. That was a lot of fun, like I said, I've, uh, some of the things I haven't really done in, in my previous videos, so a bit new this time maybe is the displacement modifier and also the decimate modifier, those are really good. I like the displacement because you can do, uh, like in this one, a cloud texture and just uh, like basically warp it and with a color ramp it makes it especially powerful because you can have it to have different elevations and things like that. And um, so the other thing as well is the decimate modifier, which is really good because when you have a really uniformed triangulated mesh, it's quite nice to do the decimate modifier and bring that down and get that low poly look back. And then also with the particle system, that's what I use to, uh, to basically use a hair render and just create some city blocks. So it would have been nice maybe to create some actual house looking models instead, but I'd, the time wouldn't really allow for that. So uh, uh, maybe I could have done one or two, but if I did two different variations, I think it'd still look like I tried to just, uh, I think maybe just a primitive model would be, is better for this one, just to simulate that there are buildings there. And then with some mountains and clouds and things like that, I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. So again, thanks a lot for suggesting it. And just to finish this video off, I think I'll, um, what I'll do is I slapped a few uh, point lights in here. So I thought for the first time in my videos here, I'm, I haven't really done much rendering in Blender at all. I've only used it for modeling uh, when I do Unity games and things. But for this one, and feel free to comment in the comments below if you have any suggestions on how to, uh, to configure the Eve render, for example, to get uh, these type of objects to look nice. Uh, please uh, put it in the comments and I'll uh, happily be able to investigate that a little bit further because I'm totally a noob when it comes to rendering in Blender. But what I'll do now is, uh, like I said, I've put a few light sources in here. So let's go into the rendering tab and finish this video off here because um, maybe if I, um, I enable the, the ambient inclusion and the bloom. And then uh, let's see, what else should we in? Uh, I want to go into this tab down here somewhere and change the background to black because we're in space after all. So, and then if we do F12 to do a render here. Okay, so it's a bit maybe too bright still and things like that. And I should move the camera back maybe. I think I'll change the camera. Let's see if I grab the camera here. Tab. Here's the camera. I'll probably want to do the 50 mil. I'll bring it down to a bit wider. Let's try that on F12, that's better. And then I can move it a bit closer. So I'll change this one from global to local. Now I can just move it in its depth 
axis. F12 to render. Let's move it even further closer here. F12 again. So a little bit closer still. F12. There we go. And then uh, the lights are too bright, so let's bring those down. I'll go into... Uh, I'll select the lights here, actually. Point lights. There. Check, click the light bulbs, bring them down to maybe a thousand only. F12, that's a bit better as well. Actually, I, do you know what? I think I'll bring it past this mountain, the camera. So let's grab that camera here again. Shift space and G, move it into there maybe. Maybe that's better. And then uh, let's see what else should I do? Maybe move it a bit to the side bar to rotate it on the uh, Y axis here, F12. And let's move these lights a bit so they're not in the exact same location. Oh. Let's grab a few point lights here. So that one, let's bring it up there. This one down here maybe. How do you do it with a sun in the in an O'Neill cylinder, by the way? How would you uh, achieve a decent looking light in here? Mm -hmm. I'll have to look up on that because I've got no idea. I want to visit one of these, though. I think I might struggle with that time wise, but I think, I think they're still too bright. So we have to bring them down even further. So let's select these lights again. And go to the light bulb here and bring them down to 500, maybe. F12. Okay. Ah oh, well, like you see, my uh, my skills when it comes to Eve rendering is no good. It even looks better, I think, in the in here. <laughs> I prefer this view a hundred times. So, please do suggest uh, some tips on how to teach me how to render this thing so it could look decent. Expand the description, and you'll find a download to. I'll put this file there in the blend file. So. Uh, feel free to use this one and do some rendering tricks and show me what you can do <laughs> to, to make it render properly in Blender. And go, please mention a few of the steps. Give me some hints on how to do it properly so I can uh, uh, I can render things as well. What, what would Blender be without being able to render? I have to teach myself that. No, I don't have to teach myself that. You'll have to teach me how to render in Blender. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this week, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And next week, I'll uh, do another 10-minute blend. I know there are already a few more suggestions in the comments, so I'll have a look at those. I will make the gun, and I will make the police station. Those have already been mentioned, and I think there's a few other ones there as well. So a tank, I think. And well, I'll, I'll make sure to check all the comments again. So have a great week, everyone. Uh, take care, and I'll speak to you soon again. Bye for now.